Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1054. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about signs of inflation slowing. And this is something we've been looking for. We've been predicting that we would have a market rebound that was so strong. And we're starting to see that this week, we had three strong days in the stock market. And today, the Dow is up over 670 points, 2.2% so far. And that's because of some good news in statistics, in corporate reports that are showing us that inflation is showing some signs of slowing down, which leads to us thinking there may be less need for the Fed to continue to raise rates as aggressively as they have. And that is causing the stock market to rebound. Now, we also have some early indications that we may not be heading toward a recession. So things have gotten so negative, so bearish, where people were predicting dire straits going forward, and it's just not that bad. It's not as bad as what they've been saying. So here are the highlights of some of the good news that came out today. First of all, a consumer sentiment reading closely followed by the Federal Reserve showed a slight easing of inflation expectations. Consumer sentiment hit a record low reading of 50 in June, according to a University of Michigan survey released Friday morning. And while on the surface that's not positive for the market, investors liked a figure inside the report, which showed 12-month inflation expectations by consumers easing back to 5.3%. A preliminary reading earlier this month that was pivotal in influencing the Fed to get more aggressive with its rate hike showed inflation expectations at 5.4%. So Terry Sandvin, chief equity strategist at U.S. Bank Wealth Management, said, on balance, sentiment is mixed. Consumers are getting out and paying for experiences, namely travel, leisure, beauty items, household essentials, etc. And elevated inflation, particularly higher food and energy costs, are among the headwinds widely expected to crimp discretionary spending in the near term. Interestingly, cruise line stocks led the S&P 500 gains today. Shares of Carnival Corporation rallied 9% after the company said booking volumes in its most recent quarter were nearly double the volumes in the first quarter, or the company's best quarterly booking volume since the beginning of the pandemic. Royal Caribbean Group surged 12%. Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings rallied 11% and Wynn Resorts was up 8%. So that tells us people are back out there traveling again. The economy is opening up. This is very good news and against the narrative about a recession coming. This is evidence that is opposite to that. So that's very positive. Now, the really important news that came out was from Federal Express. Federal Express is considered a bellwether. That means it tells us which direction the economy is moving well ahead of just about anyone else. Because before we have a slowdown, you're going to have a slowdown in buying, which is a slowdown in shipments, which is a slowdown for Federal Express. But that's not what we're seeing. Federal Express surged 9% after delivering an upbeat earnings forecast. So what did FedEx have to say? FedEx said no recession. That's right. Federal Express came out and said there will be no recession. They see growth, albeit in the single digits, but it's growth that is happening. They don't see a slowdown. They said there is continued stress on supply chains, but technology is allowing them to meet demand. And they use several tech-based initiatives that were driving increased productivity in its package processing line and dock operations, as well as its ongoing efforts to optimize last mile delivery. After closing out a record fourth quarter and fiscal full year, 
FedEx turned its sights on the year to come, telling investors that it does not foresee a recession, but is expecting low single-digit volume growth in package deliveries led by continued outperformance of its e-commerce customers. There you have it. The bellwether has told us there is no pullback in spending. The consumer is strong. People are employed. They're spending. They're buying. They're shipping. So that's the news that we needed to hear that supports my theory of the stock market having a sharp rebound. The rebound is going to come because if inflation has peaked and that's behind us, That means the Fed doesn't have to get as aggressive. The economy is already slowing on its own, but not that much to warrant a recession. If inflation is coming down on its own, that means the Fed doesn't have to be the one to do it. And we're starting to see things move in the right direction. Now, I've already reported that some commodities prices have come down dramatically, namely in lumber, in copper, and in iron, among other things. That's good news because not everything is moving in the direction of higher prices. And of course, lumber and copper are very important in construction. That means less pressure on home builders. So this is very good news. I'm still very bullish. I'm expecting a very strong rebound now. This also means that the low of the market could be behind us. I can't guarantee it, but this is the kind of news that will help support exactly what I've been telling you, which is that rip roaring bull market is coming and we've already seen it start this week. More of this to come. Not that we won't have our down days, we will, but I think this news is where money managers are going to quietly adjust their portfolios, start buying this dip, and that will continue our rip-roaring bull market rally that I still foresee. So don't believe the narrative about a recession. We have evidence contrary to that now. Inflation evidence, evidence from the bellwether FedEx, which is the early indicator of what's to come. And we are going to see that reflected in the stock market rebound. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.